Hello friends, I'm Rob, this is Digital Waste Draw, and in this video I'm going to be looking at some different ways to kitbash noise marines. You can see I'm in my new space, and I thought the best way to celebrate this lovely purple room was with a video about my favourite boys in purple, the Emperor's Children. I'm dedicated to the theme because I, like they, are perfectionists. Is that, is that in shot? How does this work? Right? Ah, whatever, close enough. Noise Marines are one of the coolest units in 40k, because who doesn't love a sonic weapon? The official upgrade pack is ancient though, and potentially older than some of my audience. Well, maybe not my audience, but it's an old kit is what I'm saying. To get started, let's build a Chaos Space Marine. The new kit is lovely, and having built my share of the old plastics, I'm not sad to see them go. I apologise for having clipped a few bits off the sprue already. I know it's nice to see a fresh box being opened. Luckily, I can show you what a new box would look like using state-of-the-art technology. I have an art degree. I chose one of the chunkier bodies, as I thought it would look good with the big sonic weapon he'll be holding. It also had this vent thing on the chest that looked a bit like a speaker. Clip the parts off the sprue and clean off the mould lines. I went with the regular Tamiya cement over the extra thin stuff because the bits are all pretty chunky. Space Marines are usually pretty easy to assemble, but it is worth figuring out how the bits go together before you cover them in glue. Before. Here's the body next to an old Chaos Marine and a Primaris Marine, just so you can see how they look when comparing eye levels. Not that he has eyes yet. Your best friend when kit bashing Noise Marines is the Raptors kit. It has loads of shoulders and helmets with like uh, speakery bits built in. I'm going to be using one of the Raptor helmets. I uh, don't have any spare shoulders to hand because I'm a poor YouTuber and I use them all already. Why not subscribe so I can chase my dream of having enough Raptor bits to bathe in? Slanesh loves it when you subscribe to Digital Waste Job. Says it on Lexicanum, so it must be true. I chose a Thousand Suns backpack. This is also a great kit for a source of ostentatious bits. I left the head off for now, so I can pose it properly once the gun is attached. I see this question asked a lot online. Does the ancient upgrade sprue work with the new scaled Chaos Space Marine bodies? I intend to find out. But I intend to find out! No subtlety here. I grabbed an old noise marine that I painted back when I was in university, and I straight up ripped his arms off. Shocking scenes of miniature violence. So, do they fit on the new marines? Yeah, kind of. I think you should do a bit of filing and green stuffing to make the joints secure, but they basically fit without too much trouble. This one is a metal blastmaster, but I assume the resin kits are basically the same size. And here's a sonic blaster, just so you can see how it looks. I saw this conversion on Reddit a little while ago, and I liked it so much that I reached out to Sam Hollis Brown, who was nice enough to let me include it in the video. I'll link their social media in the description below, so go give them a follow if you like this kit bash. This is my attempt to recreate it. The base of the weapon is a bolter, so I found a likely looking candidate on the sprues. I went with one that could have its ammo uh, house easily removed. The barrel of the conversion is made from a chainsawed engine, so I clipped and cleaned the chainsawed. I removed the barrel and the top uh, hat thing from the bolter, as they give the weapon its distinctive profile. After clipping them off, I filed the area smooth. I also trimmed away the bullet hole uh, door slider thingy with a knife, as again, 
This is going to be an energy weapon and not a projectile device. Next, I removed the engine part from the chainsword. I cut at the hand with a knife, as this part was quite delicate and I didn't want to damage it with clippers. The other side was much more open, so I just clipped at it right off, no mercy. And then I cut down some of the sticky out bits that were left. And of course I filed everything smooth. Next, I cut part of the blade to length and I trimmed off the teeth, as this would become the gun's uh, like long bit, the gun longer. If you were doing a whole army of these, I think you could leave this part out to make the conversion simpler and quicker. Here's roughly how it will go together. Now, usually I just attack conversions with enough plastic glue to hide my sins, but this time I decided to pin the bits in place. This would help the whole thing be straighter as well as stronger. I drilled some holes with a uh, drill and then I clipped some um, paper clips for the pins. Then I attacked it with plenty of plastic glue as nature intended. I believe the original conversion drilled a hole for the barrel and if you're making an army of these that would probably be a good idea. In my bits box look this sprue. Uh, I'm not into gunpla but they can have some very useful accessories that you can use for Warhammer. I think these bits are meant to be for Gundam exhaust vents or something like that. But this little square would work great as a sonic blaster barrel. I clipped it off, cleaned it up and felt like a giant as I got it attached to the end. Seriously, this thing's tiny. They're not just for Gundams, but I'm going to call them Gundam bits throughout this video because I already wrote the script and recorded it. I needed to cover the bullet ejector hole, so I took this leftover handguard from the chainsword and I stuck it in place. Finally, I trimmed off the bolt rounds hanging out the bottom. I probably should have done this at the start of the conversion, but never mind. For the power cable, I used a Vansar ponytail thing. I have a lot of Vansar bits because I have impeccable taste, but you can use whatever wires you have in your bits box. Glue it into place and the sonic weapon is complete. Here's how it looks, now it's assembled. We've got this far and it's finally time to show you how I make my own sonic blasters. It's a simple conversion which makes it easy to do over an entire army and it's got that heft I like from Sonic Weapons. The base of this conversion is the Silencer from the Grey Knight's Strike Squad. I will admit that I have no idea how popular these weapons are in the current meta, but in my experience they are rare enough so as not to be immediately recognisable and not super sought after by fellow bits hunters. Maybe you're watching this from a future where Grey Knight's Silencer spam is all anyone can think about. Hmm, weirder things happen. It's an older plastic bit, but it fits on the Chaos Marine bodies reasonably easily. To start with, I remove this little dangly icon, and then, as always, I remove the mold lines and clean up the weapon. The trickiest part of this is removing the Inquisition icon. There's no good angle to get at this icon, so I just went at it with a knife and then filed it flat afterwards. Next, I needed to get the barrel part flat, so again I cut with a knife and then filed it smooth. Going back to the Gundam sprue from before, I found this little speaker type part and I used it to cover where the Inquisition icon used to be. For the barrel, usually my go-to bit is the end part from a Necron Immortal Tesla carbine. I was out of those however, so it was back to the Gundam bits. I found this round part that was the right size and I used it for the barrel of the Sonic Blaster. Glue it on and there you go, one Sonic Blaster. Finally, let's make a Blastmaster. I've definitely struggled over the years to find a good way of making a Blastmaster in plastic but the Horus Heresy finally gave me my answer. The Volkite Culverin would be the perfect base. Big, chunky, weird technology, and not immediately recognisable as like a heavy bolter or something. Volkite Culverin. I don't know man, what's Volkite Culverin with you? B 
Being a newer kit, the scale with the Chaos Marines was pretty much perfect. I assembled the gun as usual, cleaning and then gluing it together. The end of the gun already looks like some kind of speaker grill, but I wanted something a bit heftier. Heft. Back to the Gundam gubbins. I know I am using these a lot, but like seriously, they're so useful. I chose an end piece that was much longer than the standard gun barrel, so as to modify the gun's profile a little bit more. I clipped off the end of the gun, filed it flat, and then glued the bit in place. Thick plastic glue is your friend here again, as it gives you time to get the bit lined up perfectly, and then it dries solid once you're done. Next, I would add some more wires to make it look more high-tech. Wires and pipes mean sci-fi gun, right? I found this in my bits box. I think they're pipes from the aggressor's kit. I lined the bits up to get a feel for how I wanted them to go together. Then it was a case of clip, cut, measure, repeat, until the bits were the right shape to fit together. Having said that, I actually cut too much off, and so I added this little off-cut part to fill the gap. I'm definitely more of an orc mech boy than I am an Eldar bone singer when it comes to converting. Just get stuck in and hope it works out. Once the main pipe was in place, I cut down the wire and then I bent it gently into position before gluing it into the gun. Finally, time to add some extra gubbins. This bit was from an Adeptus Mechanicus kit and it looked like it could either be some energy cells or maybe some mid-battle combat drugs for if the marine gets a bit bored. It glued into place really easily on the side. With that done, here are all the sonic weapons side by side so you can see how they compare. Which one is your favourite? Obviously it's my army so I'm going to be using my conversions. I finished attaching the Sonic Blaster and the Blastmaster, and here are the completed Noise Marines ready to rock and roll. Let's do a fancy 360 alongside some painted Marines to round out the video. Thanks for watching, I hope you enjoyed it. If you like this video and you haven't subscribed, why not go ahead and do that now? If you have, thank you very much. If you want to support me even more, I've set up a coffee account which I'll link below. Any support you can give me would be really appreciated and it will help me continue making these videos. For now though, why not watch something else? The YouTube algorithm will be suggesting something on screen for you very shortly. Seems like that's the end of the video. Bye!